Well, welcome to this week's episode of Culture Makers. <laughs> I'm James Meehan, and I'm here with the one, the only, Riley Saval. Hello. <laughs> and today we are talking about Satanic Converse, the Olympics, and back to school, baby. Come on, it's gonna be a good one. And we're so excited that you're joining with us. If you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe to the YouTube's channel, like the video, leave a comment down below of whatever topics you want us to tackle in the future mm -hmm. so that we can be talking about the things that you want us to talk about. Topic number one, satanic converse. Riley, what are your thoughts on the uh, recent <laughs> new pair of shoes that Converse released designed by uh, a man by the name of Rick Owens, who was uh, trying to make a creative statement his words, not mine. <laughs> yeah, um, I have a lot of thoughts. I would say um, this is kind of what I thought about Little Nas X too, like going back to that. Mm, come on, I the think, other Satan shoes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's very much like a publicity stunt to make Christians mad. Mm. <laughs> and I think it come on. is proven to do that both times. Right, and, well, and what's so fascinating is when Christians get really angry and talk about it on the internet, it actually promotes these shoes to right. other people. Well, because they always say bad publicity is good publicity. Right, there's no such thing as bad publicity. Yeah. It's all just publicity. Yeah. And I think this is the thing that's so interesting to think about is how do we as followers of Jesus respond mm. to people that are not Christians doing things that we probably don't like? Right. Do we respond with judgment, with hate and condemnation, or do we respond with love, grace, and empathy? Mm. This is one of the things that we've talked about a lot, and it's this idea that as followers of Jesus, our job is not to make the rest of the world more like us. Right. Our job is to become more like Jesus. And when mm. we follow Jesus closely, we become more like him, then other people will see that love, grace, empathy, truth in us, right. and they'll want to be a part of it. But when all we do is throw stones at the people on the outside, they're never going to want to come inside. And one of the things that I thought was really interesting is uh, this designer, one of the things that he talked about, uh, his reasoning for liking pentagrams mm -hmm. and these shapes and things like that, is he said that they are a culture's grasp for control. That this symbolism suggests the pursuit of pleasure and the pursuit of sensation. And mm -hmm. the reason why that's so fascinating to me is because really the original sin in the garden was yeah. human beings trying to take control from God yeah. and oh, put it in good. their own hands. Mm -hmm. What they were pursuing was pleasure, desire and sensation. I Come on! What this individual is describing is they're looking for something that is more than mm -hmm. what's currently in front of them. What they're looking for right. is the source of all satisfaction and right. goodness and truth. And that source is Jesus. And if we don't represent Jesus well to somebody like that, right. then when the time comes, they're not gonna be open to hearing the truth of God's right. word. Well, and I so, think if we're if we're arguing against these shoes and are you know saying I'm gonna burn my Converse and um, <laughs> I've literally seen I've literally seen people say that um, people I know and I'm like oh gosh yeah, yeah. Like, if we're gonna boycott Converse and I get it because it comes from a place of like they're disrespecting you know our culture and our beliefs and um and what we value and I, I understand that but at the same time if we're doing that then people like Rick Owens or Little Nas X will never ever want to be. Right like a Christian or believe what we believe because all they see is like, they're just hateful, you yeah. know? And that's the exact opposite of what our goal is as 100%. Christians. So I know it's like hard for us to, I guess like quote unquote, like tolerate something like that. Yeah, yeah. But at the same time, it's like, <laughs> what are we doing by showing hate and showing like, and talking about rage and burning our converse? Right. Like, Nobody's gonna be like, oh yeah, I want to, I want to sign up for that. Right. Well, and I think that's the thing that's so interesting is our culture talks a lot about the importance of tolerance. Yeah. But Jesus didn't. He mm. talked about grace. Mm. What is grace? It's the unmerited, unearned, undeserved favor of God. And yeah. so I think that's the thing where we can get into this posture of us versus them, and right. if they disrespect us, then we need to make sure that we get back at them. Mm -hmm. But the posture that Jesus modeled wasn't standing up for what you believe in. Right. It was actually laying down your life for the good of others. Yeah. And I think that's the thing that we wanna model. Obviously, use wisdom, use discernment. Yeah. Don't be dumb. Like, what I'm not saying, I wanna make sure this is clear, because some of y'all are gonna misunderstand yeah. me. This we're not happened. for Converse <laughs> we're, we're, shoes. We are not <laughs> promoting yeah. you to go out and purchase these shoes. I definitely would not do that. Mm -hmm. But here's also what we're not promoting. We are not promoting that you go out and bash on the people who designed them or mm -hmm. the people who purchased these. Mm -hmm. What I'm asking you to do is to love them in the same way that God through Christ has loved you. Yeah. Because while all of us were still sinners, mm -hmm. Jesus died for us. Grace is really easy to give when we want to give it. Oh, come on, <laughs> let's go. And it feels really good when other people give it to us. Yeah. 
Dang. Oh, well, we came out strong. Coming out strong. How are you guys doing? Do you guys need a break? Here's a quick break. Space Jam 2 recently released. A while ago, we didn't talk about it though because no. I think they were waiting for me to talk about it because I fallaciously claimed months ago that I had already seen it because yeah. for some reason I thought that I had. I yeah, hadn't. let's roll that back. Let's roll that back. Let's see that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, is it not out yet? No, it's not out yet, man. Well, the last week I lied because oh. I thought I've seen it. <laughs> Space Jam 2, more like Space Jam Poo. It ain't even out yet, bro. I don't even know what no. I'm talking about. Then. No. I had never seen it, still haven't. I did watch some video reviews, and the consensus- <laughs> The fact that you still haven't <laughs> seen it. Listen, the consensus on the internet seems to be that Space Jam 2 is really- Poo. Uh, you, you were supposed to say Space Jam Poo. We'll try it again. That Space Jam 2 is really- Space Jam Poo. <laughs> that was so lame. Moving on, next one. Okay, next thing. The Olympics! Wait, 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 actually, before we go to the Olympics, oh. I just want to make a statement really fast about Space Jam 2. Oh, yeah. I think it was bad. Listen, I, I didn't even wa okay. <laughs> I didn't watch it all the way because I actually thought it was so bad. It's like one of wait, those things- Wait, so you started like, watching it? Yeah, I, <laughs> I think it was so bad because Michael Jordan is the GOAT. LeBron James just can't touch him, so. Wow, shots fired. In the comments below, who do you think is the greatest of all time? Is it Michael Jordan? Is it LeBron James? Or maybe, just maybe, is the future goat Giannis Antetokounmpo. Or is it Bugs Bunny? Or Bugs Bunny. Who's the Bunny. real star of both movies. Okay. The Olympics! The Olympics! The Olympics! Another thing I didn't watch! Uh, so I didn't either, but I did watch a lot of highlights on YouTube after the fact. Yes. So like Lasha Talakdaze, when he mm. world record in the clean and snatch, breaking all the records that he had previously set. That was amazing. Lu Xiaojun mm. also broke a bunch of world records. Then I did watch the highlights of the men's ping pong final 1v1. Oh my word. And it was incredible. You know what I did watch though? <laughs> Olympic power walking. I watched that, yeah. I didn't even know that was a thing. It was just on, like, I was like out eating dinner. It was on the TV and they're just like. I'm sorry, what? That's how they, that's how they power walk, that like is. that. It's real. and the argument that me and my friend were like going back and forth about is, how do you, like, what is the like discrepancy between power walking and running? So at what point are they like, you're disqualified, you just started running, you know? Like, how do they keep themselves restrained well, while you're, still being fast? Well, because if your knees bend more than right. 40 degrees, oh, then that's you're it. out. So what's you cool about are. the Olympics is, you know, for, for us, we live here in the United States, the USA yeah. took home more medals than mm. anyone else. Mm. And we had more gold medals than anyone else, I think. We only beat China by one, so it was wow. a very, very close race. Yeah, and I—I I mean, that's exciting. Yeah, I, I feel USA. like I feel like their Pride. medals are my medals. Yes, because <laughs> because we, that's my team. Because we actually did a lot of the work. Yeah, I like I said, I watched some of the highlights on YouTube, and I I can take full responsibility for our power walking medal. Yeah, I don't actually know right. if we got one in that well, one, but I watched that. I was dedicated. That, it goes though, back to me. Is that even everything's though, about me? So even though. <laughs> You and I did not compete in any right. of those Olympic events. Correct. As citizens of the United States of America, right. we see that as our team. Yeah. We see that as our win. Mm. I think this is the thing that's so interesting about the faith that we all believe in of Christianity. Oh, is that I see it what is doing. not about me, myself, and I. Mm. It is a communal effort. It's mm. all of us in this together. The Jewish people, when they would look at the story of the Exodus where God delivered the people of Israel from slavery in Egypt, they wouldn't say that God delivered our ancestors. Mm. They would say God delivered us. And mm. I think this is what's so important for us to recognize is that even though as Riley so clearly demonstrated. We live in a very individualistic <laughs> culture and society in our modern world. I was just doing that to world. set this up. No, it's so good. You so did good. it so well. Yeah, yeah. The, the reality of the Christian faith is that it is always meant to be communal. It is mm. always meant to be us together as the body of Christ, arm in arm, doing everything we can to love and serve others the same way that God through Christ has loved us. Right. Did you think I was gonna get there from That's the That's pretty Olympics? great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you did. I got, you, I got it. You, you, you I've known up. you for long enough. I, uh, <laughs> I knew where I was going. Next topic. <laughs> Here's the thing you gotta know. Back to school is coming very soon. Yep. Some of you, like, in the next few days. Others of you, yeah. in the next few weeks. So what we wanted to yeah. do was, why are you making that face? Because <laughs> I just remembered my face. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite thing about back to school when I was in school, it goes back to like kindergarten. Like I have some distinct memory that now like fueled every single year after that is back to school always reminded me of the smell of Germex. And for some reason you just smell in the air. So it's like, it's back to school season, well, you know? I'm so glad that you shared that <laughs> with all of our That viewers. was a really vulnerable and intimate moment. Oh, that me. was vulnerability. <laughs> wow, we honor your vulnerability. Thank you. Okay, back to school, coming soon. We want to give you our top five tips.
tips. Wow, Say it with me. Top five tips. <laughs> for how to make the most of this new year of school. Tip number one. This is coming at you from my third grade teacher's picture on the wall. Mm. Said fun is an attitude, not an activity. Mm. So here's what that means. Can I tell you, as somebody who loves fun, that actually doesn't sound fun. <laughs> okay, but, but here's the deal. Here's why this is so important. You have experienced this, where you've gone into something thinking mm. it would suck. Mm. And what mm. was it? It's pretty sucky. Mm. Whereas, you've gone into other things, thinking it would be awesome. Yeah. And it was awesome. Yeah. This is the same attitude that we need to take towards something that for many of us, we're not looking forward mm -hmm. to, which is school. Yeah. But if we go into it hoping for the best, yeah. looking for the good, I'm telling you, we're gonna find it because fun, it's an attitude. Right, not an activity. Not an activity. Which reminds me, uh, it reminds me. Go ahead, go <laughs> it ahead. It reminded me. You're it, killing me. <laughs> it reminds me of psychology. Uh, it's oh. called confirmation bias. Oh. And it's whatever you're looking for, you will find. Oh yeah. So it's I was, exactly I was what you're curious saying. as to how. Yeah, that totally. Yeah. That's good. So it's like if you're if you're going in thinking school's gonna be really crappy. Come on. You're probably gonna find a really crappy time. Like mm -hmm. if you are like I don't have friends and everybody around me hates me or whatever. Yep. You're gonna see all these things like maybe you see two people whispering and you're just gonna assume they're whispering about you or you're Come gonna on, see dude. like all of these things and be like, yep, that's true. Everybody hates me. But if you're like. I'm actually a person that people love and I love myself and I have good friends, yep. then you're going to see that too. On, so dude. confirmation bias. You're gonna find what you're looking for because fun is an attitude, not an activity. Tip number two, Riley, take it away. Have a cool pencil bag. <laughs> <laughs> I told him before the show started, I said, listen, my advice next to your advice is gonna be really great. That's good. Like yeah. when you say a cool pencil bag, what, what defines cool? Is that like just like a sandwich baggie? That Where would be the actual opposite of cool. <laughs> I yeah, just yeah. I want to make sure they know. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Cool is so, so James subjective. is a great example of what's not cool often. Oh! I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't um, even hurt my feelings because I believe the best. You meant it as a compliment. Yep, I sure did. You're just a simple bias. guy. <laughs> I can go. So, anyways, cool. I just bought a cool pencil bag that is, it's pink, but it's clear. And so it's like, you can see every pencil inside, Ooh. but it's pink. Oh, wow. Everything's like pink tinted. Wow. Anyways, I like pencil bags that express who you are. So if you like Star Wars, get a freaking Yoda Come on. pencil bag. I don't know, I well, don't okay, like Star Wars. Could. I don't know why wow. I chose Star Wars. I know nothing about Star Wars. <laughs> All right, so tip number one, fun is an attitude, not activity. Tip number two. Cool pencil bag. Tip number three, you ready for this? Learning to be disciplined with things you don't care about makes it way easier mm. to be disciplined with things you do. Here's what that means. So many of you have expressed, thought, said, proclaimed mm -hmm. similar things that I have when mm -hmm. I was your age, yeah. which is I'm never gonna use any of this later in my life, so why am I learning it now? Mm. And you're right about some things. You're wrong about other things. Yeah. But here's the thing that I wish I would have been more intentional about when I was your age. Recognizing that learning to be disciplined and working hard on things I don't care about, homework and schoolwork, mm -hmm. would have made it so much easier for me to be disciplined in things that I now do care about. Yeah. Right? Like I have seen it over and over again that people who are disciplined and work hard in school yeah. tend to be better in their jobs because they've already learned how to work hard. Whereas yeah. people, you know, like me, who didn't work very hard in school, then when I got to my job, I had to learn the hard way of how important hard work really is. Right. And so this is the thing that I would say to you is even in the middle of what would be a really frustrating and difficult and not exciting project, know that you are developing the skill of discipline. Mm. And that skill will be so valuable throughout the rest of your life, whether it's in college, whether it's in a job, whether it's when you are a part of a family or a friend group, or even in your faith as you're following Jesus. Discipline makes a big difference. Yeah, that's good. Tip number one, fun is an attitude, not an activity. Tip number two, get a cool pencil bag. Tip number three, discipline makes a difference. Tip number four, Riley, go. Procrastination is actually giving you more work in the future. Oh, come on. Come on, somebody. As the queen of procrastination. Yes, the queen. I procrastinate all of the time. And in high school especially, I feel like it only made things worse because in the moment when you should just do it, yeah. you're worried about it and you're thinking about it. But you're like, Dude. nah, I'm not gonna do it. I'm gonna do it later, I'm gonna do it later, I'm gonna do it later. 
And then you do it later, and then it's like you're cramming, because I was like, yes. I, sometimes I did my homework for like second period and first period. So it's <laughs> like, I'm cramming for second period's homework while also trying to pay attention to first period because mm. I have homework that comes out of that. It's just like chaos and actually creates more frustration, more anxiety, and more work for you. So just get it done when you think about it. I don't remember what the rest of the tips are, so we're just gonna jump to tip number five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> tip number five, your school is your mission field. Ooh. Your school is your mission field. There are people in your school that God has specifically called you to be the hands and feet of Jesus for. We are called to be the salt of the earth and the light of the world. Everywhere we go, we're meant to love people, to bring justice, and to show the mercy of God to others. Right. And your school is such a perfect place for you to get to do that. Yeah. I so wish I would have known Jesus when I was in middle school and high school so that I could have shared this faith with others. Because when I was in middle school and high school, uh, me and all my friends yeah. didn't really want anything to do with church or Christianity. And honestly, I think back on that time and I just wish that I would have had somebody that would have invited me into the family of God, showed mm. me his love so that I could have felt at a time where it seemed like everything in the world was going wrong and was miserable. Right. That there was some sense of hope beyond that. Yeah. And I think that's the thing that is so, so special about you as you're watching this video is you're somebody who is seeking after Jesus. Mm. You're somebody who's trying to do the best you can with the influence you have right where you are. And so never forget that your school is your mission field. There's yeah. gonna be times where you're frustrated, you're fed up, all of those different things. But I believe that God has called you to where you are for a reason to bring his hope and his good news to others. Yeah. Riley, any last thoughts? I'm living proof of that actually. My friend in middle school invited me to switch. Come on. And dude. that's how I gave my Come life. Come on, let's go! Yes. They gave me an invite to switch. I came only because I thought switch was cool. I literally did. Oh, with the pencil back! <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> I came with my pencil back and everything. I didn't even come because I was interested in church. I was just like, ah, oh, yeah, I heard it was cool. So I came and I like fell in love with it, fell in love with Jesus, and now I'm a freaking pastor. So. <laughs> Come on, she's a pastor! <laughs> <laughs> School's coming up soon. Make the most of it. Don't be lame. Be cool. Mm, word. <laughs> All right, that is it for this episode of Culture Makers. Thank you all so much for tuning in. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. If you've got questions or thoughts or suggestions on what we should talk about in the future, type it down. Below. That, below. Type it down. Type it down in the place where, okay, bye. <laughs>